A Shield Kapati here from Philly.com, joined by special guest Wes Bunting, Director of College Scouting from the National Football Post. Wes, we touched on the offense, now we want to move to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, let's start in the secondary. Who's your top rated cornerback on the board? The top corner in my opinion is Kyle Wilson from Boise State. Most people like Joe Hayden, but Kyle Wilson, technically sound, most fluid athlete in this year's draft, has the ability to get cleanly in and out of his breaks. Balance is a key for all cornerbacks in the NFL. Being at balance, being able to get out of your breaks, make plays on the football, no one does it better than Kyle Wilson. That's interesting. You mentioned Hayden. Is he a guy who you have Wilson above him? Is speed the issue there or other factors kind of go into it? No, I think he's an elite caliber athlete, Joe Hayden. When he's asked to click and close on the football in front of him, no one in this year's draft does it better. However, I worry a bit, not as fluid, not as technically sound as a guy like Kyle Wilson when asked to turn and run down the field. Will occasionally allow receivers to get behind him. That's the biggest concern I have with Joe Hayden. Okay, and then we look still in the secondary at the safety position. Eric Berry, is he, is he your top safety? Yeah, head and, head and shoulders above everyone else. I mean, he's as talented from a physical standpoint as it gets. However, it's his instincts, his anticipation, being able to read and react quickly at the line of scrimmage and find the football. That's what makes him such a unique prospect. The physical tools are there, but he's also well ahead of the game from a mental standpoint. I like him going within the top five picks. It's interesting you say that because there's been a lot of talk in you know, NFL circles, it seems like this offseason, about taking a safety that high. What's your take on that? Is that a risky move given the nature of the position, or would you not hesitate to take Barry that high? No, because he's one of the few blue chip prospects in this year's draft. And what I mean by blue chip, potential pro bowler, all pro caliber player. There's five in this year's class. Barry's one of those five. And if you lose as many games to have a top five pick, you might as well take the best player available. Definitely, and it looks like Barry will go pretty high up. We'll move to the defensive line. I did a little research. Pass rushers, really, in the last decade, very rare for a guy to come in right away and have an impact. We saw Brian Arakpo do it last year. Uh, we've seen maybe two other guys really have those double-digit sacks. Who's the guy in the first round this season you could see coming in and really being a big-time sack guy right away? Well, I don't think this guy is the most upside of anyone in the class, but most NFL-ready defensive end is Brandon Graham from Michigan. Doesn't have an elite first step. However, he plays with natural leverage, good hands, and he's really sudden on contact. Does a nice job in and out when he gets to the edge, making offensive linemen miss, dropping his shoulder, and rushing the passer. I think he's ready right away to come in, be a six to eight sack guy. I think he maxes out eight to 10 sacks throughout his career, a Derek Burgess type prospect in my opinion. Okay, so not a huge ceiling, but a guy that can come in and play right away. And what about in the later rounds? Is there a guy with that kind of higher ceiling who might not be generating the same buzz as the first round prospect? Well, one guy that I'm really interested in is Clifton Gathers from South Carolina. This is a 6'8", 300 pound defensive end who has the length has the arm size. I mean, he has the ability to play the five technique position in the NFL in a 3-4 defense. He's got as much upside in any, as any prospect in this year's draft, but very raw at this stage. I think a third, fourth, fifth round pick, you bring him in, give him a couple years to develop, I think he could be a very solid NFL player. And the last guy i got to ask you about, Jason Pierre-Paul from South Florida, a guy who I think you said has really maybe the highest upside uh, of any of those guys in the first round, but is he slipping? Uh, where do you see him t getting taken? I think so. I still think he's a first-round pick, but with Pierre-Paul, we expected a really freaky combine workout, and he didn't give it to us, so that was the biggest thing. Uh, some teams are looking at him as a 3-4 rush linebacker, some as a uh, hand-on-the-ground defensive end. I think he comes off the board because of that upside sometime between 15 and 30, but there's a lot of questions throughout NFL teams. Will this guy ever reach his ceiling in the NFL? Okay, we'll have to see. We don't have to wait a, a long time now. The draft is rapidly approaching. You can read Wes's work on the National Football Post and be sure to check out our special draft section on philly.com for all your Eagles coverage. For Wes Bunning, I'm Shiel Kapadia. Thanks for joining us.